Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to all for today's webinar. It is, uh, I can say, it is the, the fifth series of MOOC webinar, which is structuring a MOOC course. So with us today, uh, we have uh, Dr. Terry and, um, and me. Yeah, so I will go for the first session. So the first session, which is the first agenda, we will have a preparation on course structure and course content using self-instructional material, SIM template. And then the second session will be presented by Dr. Terry. He will share you some tips on structuring the MOOC on open learning platform. As we all know, for our MOOC, we will use in open learning platform. Okay, so for the preparation on course structure and course content using self-instructional material, same template, it will be for men or you need to focus on four things, which are learning resources. Second one will be learning activities. Third one will be learning assessment. And the fourth one will be the additional references. So we will go for the example of self-instructional module, which I have shared to all of you uh, when I give you the invitation email uh, last Monday. Okay, so here is the table of a uh, self-instructional module. Maybe you will have some, I can say a little bit confused on how you want to put your course plan into your uh, self-instructional module. Okay, so I will give you some example here. Okay, so here we go. If okay, this this a uh, this is an example from my course, but it's not all of the CLO I've listed here. But I just listed two CLO here. So the first one, the first one is analyze energy system prototype and the associated case study or system efficiency. Uh, first of all, my uh, my course is all about energy energy application yeah energy resources and application so that's why you can see lu1 until i just uh, list down only six lu actually it's more than that but for uh, i give you a simple example so for the learning unit one it's about solar energy system learning unit two it's about wind energy system and then goes to hydroelectric system, wave and tidal energy system, and bioenergy resources. Last but not least, it's all about conventional energy. Okay. So, okay, the first CLO, okay, the first CLO I, uh, I've already mentioned that it's about analyzing the system prototype. And CLO2 is about discuss and convey the ideas clearly, effectively, and confidence on a problem related to applied energy systems. So there are two CLO for your course uh, plan, okay, uh, or for your MOOC. So how you want to put it in terms of the self-instructional module? So here I just make a simple table because can, uh, I can say that each of our learning unit, okay, we have, uh, they have their own CLO. For example, here, the first learning unit, the first topic, solar energy system, it covers for CLO1. Okay, it's about analyze an energy system. And the second topic, it also covers CLO1. And the third topic, and the fourth topic also covers CLO1. But the fifth topic and the sixth topic, it cover 
CLO2, which is discuss and convey the ideas clearly, effectively, and uh, confidence problem related to applied energy system. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, for our MOOC here, we have uh, MOOC with industry. Okay, by uh, industry, it, it has been done by Faculty of Language and Communication, but the rest, uh, Faculty of Resources, Science, and Technology, and others, you have a MOOC uh, under category micro credential. So maybe you will start to think how you want micro credential is actually you uh, make your course. Okay, this is the full course which has six topics, but how you want to divide it into micro size. So I'll give you an example here. As you can see here, we have six topics with two CLO. Uh, we have four topics under CLO1 and only two topics under CLO2. Maybe you want to divide it into three micro-credential modes, for example here. Okay, maybe I would like to divide it my topic, uh, my first and second topic into first micro micro credential MOOC, which only covers solar energy and also wind energy systems. And the second one, I would like to, um, uh, second MOOC micro credential, I would like to have only hydroelectricity and system and wave and tidal energy system. And last but not least, I will. Uh, the third micro credential, it is about bioenergy resources and conventional energy. So, why I divide it? First of all, um, the first micro credential, as you can see, the red box here, it covers CLO1. Maybe you can divide it uh, using uh, the same CLO or maybe within the same topic, similar topic. Yeah, solar energy and wind energy, almost like uh, I can say the weather. Okay, it's solar from the sun and wind. And how about the hydroelectricity and wave? It's more or less about the resources is the same, which is the water itself. So I, I would just want to combine those, those two topics into one micro credential. And also it, ha it has the same uh, CLO, which is CLO1. Last but not least, the third micro credential, I divide it because it's easy bioenergy resources. Uh, and also conventional energy. Bioenergy resources, you can say it as an alternative energy. And the second one is conventional energy. Maybe you can say it's like from petroleum. Yeah. So it's easy for the uh, participants who join this micro credential, the third MOOC, to compare between the conventional and also the alternative energy or the renewable energy. So I just put it uh, those. Uh, Topic five and topic six under one uh, MOOC micro credential. So that is how, okay, an example, simple example on how you want to divide your topics into several of micro credential uh, size, yeah, micro credential MOOC. Instead of uh, just one whole course plan, want, uh, or one MOOC, one complete MOOC, you can divide it into three. Okay. One of the purpose why you need to divide those into three micro credential MOOC. First of all, you need to be reminded that not all of your participants would like or would want to learn all of the energy. Maybe they are really interested only for the solar energy, okay, only one of it. But if you clump it, from topic one until topic six, in, they they did they didn't interested in in learning bioenergy resources resources with the tidal energy, but if they want to have a certificate a completion certificate of your MOOC, they need to complete all of them. Although they didn't interest interested to do it, so that's why it's really good if you have a micro credential MOOC, just only two units. They just need to complete two, two units or two topics, and then they will get the certificate of completion. Okay, uh, maybe some of the industry, uh, maybe some of the workers from the hydroelectricity, okay, 
they're really interested in joining your second micro credential MOOC, which only focus on hydroelectricity system. So that's why micro credential really helps to increase your participants or students to join in your MOOC. Huh? So after that, okay, after we have divided our uh, topics into three micro credential, oh, and then you can see here, yeah, first topic about the solar energy system. Okay, you could divide or you could uh, just make a list of the subtopic. Okay, for here, you can see it's introduction. The second one is how does solar work? Third types of solar panel and global solar energy, global solar energy use. Why you need a subtopic? Okay, because we don't want you to record or to produce a video which have a duration about like thirty minutes, just to describe all of your all of the contents about solar energy system. That's why you need to divide it into several subtopics about the introduction. Make it a bite size okay because for MOOC it is a self-paced learning or self-directed learning which is depends on your participants or uh, depends on your students who join in your MOOC so can you imagine that your students or, or for those who just joining your MOOC they need to listen and watch your video about like 30 minutes uh, I can say they will lost focus. Okay, maybe uh, suggestion is less than 10 minutes. Yeah, suggestion, but make it simple. That's why you need to divide it into several of subtopics. So your video will be, will be not long. It's just short, a bite size. So subtopics is really important. Okay, so you need to list down all of your subtopics that cover solar energy system. But you need to remember as well, your subtopics, uh, the contents, okay, must cover the CLO1, remember again. Subtopic uh, for topic one, which is solar energy system, covers CLO1, which is analyze an energy system prototype and the associated case study or system efficiency. It means that at least you need to know about the energy system. So you need to introduce about the solar energy and then about the system or prototype or system efficiency. So you need to show types or what are the examples of solar energy system which has been used globally. So that's, uh, that's at least there's a point. What are the subtopics you need to include? for solar energy system or for your uh, topic one, okay? And for example, for CLO2 here, okay, bioenergy resources, the same goes as uh, topic one. Uh, you need to write down or list down all of your subtopics to make your, uh, your video or any of your le learning resources or learning materials into a bite size. You will, it, it will, well, uh, I can say it's one of the tips just to make sure that you will not have you will not have a really long video like 30 minutes so make it a bite size yeah but again for the topic 5 it covers the CL2 which is discuss and convey the ideas clearly uh, about the related to applied energy systems okay so you need to remember for topic uh, bioenergy resources, the fifth topic, you need to remember uh, to explain or to introduce what are the problems uh, actually happen, okay, uh, for the current development. So that's why there are the fourth subtopics here, current development of bioenergy system. So you need to mention on the problems, okay, about this bioenergy resources. So it means that Okay, you need to uh, explain or to cover your topics here, okay, which need to relate again your CLO. So that's how you need to list on subtopics and topics. We go further, okay, the same template that 
uh, I've already forwarded to all of you. Okay, for example, I just pick one example here, solar energy system, okay, first topic. Okay. On the first uh, row there, okay, you will see your uh, topic learning outcome. Okay, topic learning outcome is actually it's not the same as the CLO one, but it covers the CLO one. Solar and solar energy system. It means that what are the topic learning outcome, which is solar energy system, to achieve cost learning outcome, the CLO. Yeah, the first one. In order to analyze, of course, you need to understand the principle of solar energy. Yeah. Second one, compare again with system efficiency. That one analyze. So actually, the third one, okay, cost learning outcome, analyze solar energy prototype here, covers the CLO1, okay, which is analyze uh, the energy system prototype. So again, the topic here, oh, I didn't mention about the subtopic subtopic here you could make your title of your subtopic a bit more interesting because right now you want to catch uh, the participants attention okay instead of okay as you can see the second topic here how does solar work okay maybe you want to put a solar energy definition of solar energy okay uh, the important part of the self instruction instruction module is not just to plan on how you want to divide your topic or to divide your course and subtopics but also how you want to plan how you want to write or to create your topics or subtopics into a little bit catchy okay to just attract the participants to get to know more about your mode Okay, instead of, uh, it's been mentioned earlier, oops, sorry, it's been mentioned earlier here, instead of the definition of solar energy, uh, make it, how does solar energy work? So the participant will keep questioning or just kind of triggering, hmm, I didn't know how does solar work. Yeah, so again, maybe you will have a new idea, okay, uh, how to make your subtopics or topics a little bit more catchy okay the title so again um when you have a list down your topic uh, and the clo for each of your topic and then you need to list down what are the things what are the uh, learning materials you want to include in your first subtopic your first subtopic is about the introduction yeah Maybe introduction, you want to explain about how does the system solar works. Maybe about a brief introduction about solar energy, solar. It's not too, it's not too detailed. So maybe you could provide a video. Yeah, that is one, one of your uh, learning materials. The second one, activities. Maybe you could ask the question, uh, or simple question about what do you know about solar? So it's more about the discussion okay you need but again your activities and your assessment here need to reflect back your CLO or your topic learning outcome here first is about to understand maybe it's a simple assessment like multiple choice quiz okay just to test your students they uh, their understanding do they really understand about the uh, about the solar energy Okay, and then the, for the subtopic two, which is how does solar work? Maybe you could uh, provide your video about it, how you want to explain uh, about the solar. Yeah, and the activities also must reflect again the topic learning outcome. Okay, which is need to understand or just to compare system efficiency. Uh, but analyze solar energy prototype, I guess it goes for the type of solar panel here. So if you want to analyze solar energy prototype, if you put assessment as a multiple choice quiz, which is just, just correct and wrong answer, it doesn't reflect about analyze. Okay, analyze for this uh, topic learning outcome, okay, which also reflected with the CLO one. So it doesn't suit if you want to put analyze 
for a multiple choice quiz as an assessment. Maybe you want to put a peer assessment okay, or some discussion or short answer type of assessment. Okay, so that's why it's really important. And then to re recheck again all your assessment, then remind again, it needs to reflect your uh, course learning outcome or your topic learning outcome. So we go for the next one. So learning materials, okay? For MOOC, at least you need to provide one video, at least one video, which been uh, for your one video for each topic, I will suggest which uh, for subtopic as well, okay? Which been developed by yourself and your team member, which who are the subject matter expert. Okay, so I will uh, introduce you several type of learning video that you could produce. It's not just a slide presentation only, but we have uh, more of that, more example. Okay, first of all, maybe you could uh, provide a lectures video and interview, interview as well, self-recording as well. Uh, I've seen a several of example, uh, from a faculty of social science and humanities. Their, their recorded video is in self-recording. They talk, uh, they just explaining and they self-record and explaining about the human resource development. Uh, sorry, it's not human resource, the social work, uh, about social work, yeah. And then studio, maybe you have a studio, you want to uh, record a studio and demonstrate about something, yeah. And about maybe discussions, you can put it as one of your recorded video. Narrated slide, you, as you can see here, we have been online teaching and learning like one, more than one year. So we used to have the narrated slide. That could be also one of your recorded video. And then we also have an example on location video. Example, if you want to uh, to introduce a museum, okay, some uh, some arts, maybe some arts, you can go on the location and record a video. So it makes sense as well, yeah? So a live session also, you can do it a part of your, uh, one of your learning materials and demonstration. Demonstration actually, uh, for example, if you want to demonstrate uh, Erection, chemical erection, you can do it as well. Okay. And the green screen. Yeah, I would like to mention about the green, green screen. Calm actually has a facility, uh, iStudio, which use a green screen here. You can see the green screen. And then the back, uh, the background will be your slide. Yeah. So we have a staff who could assist you in doing this green scene, a green screen record, a green screen video, just let me know when you want to do uh, the recording. I will book a slot for you, uh, so that there will be no clash, because we we have a lot of MOOC, so maybe we don't want to have a you can say it. yeah, don't have a need need to make sure that didn't clash any of the schedule yeah so again uh, you can have a visual pop pop up or text overlay and a sketch and calculation uh, one of our move from faculty of arts uh, we actually have an example of him sketch or draw and i can say a, a draw a drawing so but i will give you some example later yeah and especially for the calculation, if if there is a content or course that usually use a calculation, you can use this type of video as well. Okay, and the screen casting, if you want to do a, uh, a demonstrate on how you want to do a simulation. Okay, and animation. Okay, animation or simulation here. One of your. Uh, example of the recorded video as well yeah so 
when you have completed your sim okay your sim template there the e-learning team uh, especially me will double check again what you have done uh, or uploaded in your open learning platform for example here this is an example of MOOC in Organic Chemistry from the Faculty of Resources, Science and Technology. Okay. Uh, for your information, uh, she already done, completed all of it. So this is an example uh, on one time long ago, yet where in under Unit 3, she didn't uh, complete it yet. Okay. So here, uh, for example, for Unit 1, okay. Uh, unit 1 is about atomic structure and electron configuration of an atom. Okay. In her cost plan, I will double check again the cost plan because you need to remember uh, since we will have a micro credential or credit transfer mode, at least 80% is the same as your original cost plan. So we will be mapping again your topic. In MOOC and also topic in your cost plan to make sure it is the same yeah so that's why I put it here in cost plan actually the uh, the title of the topic is just atomic structure yeah, yeah? all right so under this unit one okay, she has uh, uploaded video one two three three videos okay about energy and atoms so it is subtopics for unit one Okay, energy and atom, and then quantum numbers. And she also provided a PowerPoint as the lecture notes as well. Okay, so the activities. I will again list down what are the activities that you have uh, created on the uh, open learning platform. So here, she put it as a post file widget where the participants need to share their op opinions. And then for assessment, because uh, uh, she wants to assess the understanding, the first understanding, she just put as a quiz in multiple choice. And of course, this be reminded again, you need also to provide additional references for further reading. So once you have completed here, so you are good to go. Okay, but you need to remember it's not just one unit. I will check all of your unit or all of your topics. Okay, for example, here under unit three, when I check it, okay, at that time, yeah, the learning activity is there, but when I click it, there is none. It's just a title, but without any activity. So I will put it as none, okay? And then there's no additional reference. You need to put additional reference. It means that maybe you want to put a YouTube video, which explain more about uh, this, Unit three, oxidation and reduction. Okay, but don't you worry. Okay, once you uh, once you have updated your uh, your learning material or activities and assessment in Open Learning Platform, I will check it and I will give this list. This is an example. I will give to you uh, to make sure that you uh, you you know what what are the missing thing and you can update it once. Once you are free uh, to update your MOOC, yeah. So I always keep updated this. Uh, I can say this learning structures in in your open learning platform. But sometimes, if you, I didn't check it every day, of course, once a week. So if you see I didn't uh, update any progress uh, about your MOOC, but you have done uh, everything, just Please email to me and or just remind to me, please check my uh, MOOC in Open Learning Platform because I have uploaded some few parts. Yeah. So next. All right. So the team, okay, the team that could, uh, the team from come can assist you in developing your course. Okay. So don't you worry. Yeah, it's kind of hectic. This open learning platform is another new platform that you need to to know the button where to click and how to upload and how to create the activity okay just contact me 
all right in order for you to 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 do the open to upload any anything about the open learning later yeah but if you still confused on how you want to divide your topics into several of micro credential MOOCs you could ask uh, for us me and dr terry for a discussion on how you want to divide uh, your topics into several of micro credential MOOCs we will really glad if you contact us and we will assist you yeah in terms of uh, I have I've already mentioned about the green screen studio. Okay, Marzuki is the person in charge to assist you on uh, recording uh, iStudio, yeah, which you're using the green screen. Again, if you want to book or if you want to use a green screen, please uh, email to me. Just just inform to me that you want to use uh, iStudio on which date uh, and what time so i can book you uh, a book a slot for you yeah okay but if you didn't want to use a green screen as your learning video you might uh, maybe you want to do like outside recording yeah uh, you can ask also you can inform to me so fitzpatrick is the person in charge or the person who could assist you on shooting outdoor i can say outdoor shooting yeah but first it's not like saying that okay i want to do a shooting outdoor shooting so please make a, a book a piece book for me first of all if you want to do outdoor shooting you need to provide a script it means that what are the things you want to explain or what are the things you want to show okay just provide a script a full a complete script so we want we want to revise it first because maybe fitzpatrick could assist you where uh the the this uh, can say where is the suitable place to do the outdoor shooting maybe in your lab if you want to show some chemical reactions but if you want to uh, on site uh, maybe you want to have an on-site location shooting you want to show a museum or something like that uh, you need to provide really details of the list so fits could prepare what are the tools uh, he need to bring along or something more or less like that yeah so that's why if you want to do uh, outdoor shooting please provide a script first okay full script and then we will revise it and then we can go for a outdoor shooting okay so don't you worry about how on how you want to develop your uh, audit video just feel free to ask okay we will uh, gladly to assist you okay so okay is there any questions about the uh, cost structure on how you want to write a cost structure in your using using sim template let me see on the chat box. For now, I didn't see any chat box here. I'm always, uh, first of all, I'm always give you an example about micro credential, but about MOOCs with industry. Actually, it is it is free. Okay, it's not free. It for you. I can say it's up to you. Okay on how you want to structure your module or your topic because it depends on you and with the, also with the industry okay because the micro credential it is really particular because we because it needs to have a at, at least 80 percent the same as the cost band which is mqa already accredited by mqa yeah so if you still confused on how you want to uh, write in your cost structure in your sim template feel free to ask me uh, we have one question from muhammad ashari in the chat, the chat uh, Habiza, yeah. if i choose to do recorded powerpoint video is it enough recorded oh, yeah should be okay but again please okay Maybe I should share you one more thing. 
Okay, it should be okay as long as it covers your topic. Okay, but your video must include a MOOC opening video. Uh, let me, yeah, I could go under, sorry, under resource hub here. Okay, actually we want to standardize all of our videos in MOOC. Okay, so under resource hub here, we have a video. Unimas logo montage. Okay. When I click it, it's actually an opening like intro video of our MOOC. Okay, you can see here. Okay, it shows Unimas MOOC Unimas. So um if you if you have a problem on how to add on this opening video montage here into your video. Just feel free to uh, uh, just feel free to share with me your video. I can add this video opening video into your uh, to your video. I mean your lecture recorded. Yeah, is it okay? Yeah. Also, also if it's okay, then then we'll upload the video to Unimas MOOC YouTube channel, right? Uh, okay. About Yes, yes, true. Yes, it is true. Once you uh, please, please share to me all of your uh, video, recorded video, because I will upload it into Unimas YouTube. Okay, Unimas YouTube for Unimas our... MOOC YouTube. <laughs> Unimas MOOC YouTube. Yeah, we have two of YouTube. So sometimes I got confused. So I will upload all of your videos into Unimas MOOC YouTube so I can link it into open learning platform all right so don't be don't please don't worry about it i will help you in 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 this technology in terms of this technology yeah so just feel free to uh share with me once you have done your uh any recording or any video that you have done uh, on your mode yeah okay yeah I get, uh, it... uh, tell you again eh? yeah yeah, I, I do uh, pre-recorded uh, audio uh, lecture, uh, not video, uh, oh, say audio. three or four. But it's this that is not not possible for mock. Uh. It must be in in a uh, picture form yeah. uh, or a video form. A uh, video form. Okay. Yes. Yes. Because uh, mock. Yeah. Yeah, Doctor Terry. Oh okay. Ah, uh, so, sorry, don't mention lah. <laughs> uh, uh, it, it's okay. It's okay to have audio lecture. Uh, it's like something like podcast. Uh, but try to have video as well. Uh, combine or uh, uh, make try to have diverse type of format. So because uh, we do know learn some learners they might prefer to listen through audio only, and some learners they like to watch uh the the presentation as they are listening. To your lecture so uh, you can you can have two versions uh, pun boleh. Uh, so uh, if you want to have a conversation only so maybe 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 it's a something like an interview uh, then okay it's something like a radio show right it's like an interview session between invited guests uh, you can you can make it something something like that that's kind of style uh, but also make make sure must have a video lecture as well lah. Uh, so that so that the the, oh, the learners can see you as well, uh, and then and then if you don't want to show your your face to the, for the whole video, it's okay. Maybe you can show at the beginning only, uh, as you started to introduce the topic of the video. At, at least show your face uh, once in a while, uh, so that so that to help at least the learner can recognize you, uh, can appreciate the the instructor. So to get so to have some connection uh, with the teacher, with the instructor, the, the the person who give them the knowledge. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, we need to have like a little bit of human touch. Uh, just show your face at the beginning, and then maybe you could show your slide presentation. Uh, actually, there's one example, Doctor Chung. Yeah, actually, your video is actually one of the example. Actually, he has done uh, the video. Uh, he actually uh, introduced himself at the beginning of the video, and then he just continue of uh, with his learning content, right? Uh, okay, I guess 
Let me double check again on chat box. Okay. All right. I guess there's no more question. Okay, Dr. Terry, would you like to continue? Okay. All right. Thank you, Dr. Yeah, Pizza. Yeah? All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming for uh, joining the today's workshop. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And by hopefully by the end of the workshop, okay, or maybe a few days later, you can submit your finalized uh, version of your course, uh, your SIM, so that we can help you to create the general structure of your MOOC course in open learning. Uh, but of course, lah, you will you will modify it in the future again. Okay. But with the same. It gives us some idea on how to create the structure of your open of your course page on open learning. Okay, that's why we we do need your sim actually. Okay, so so this is my presentation for today, which is tips on on structuring the MOOC on open learning. Okay, so what we're gonna cover in one hour. Okay, hopefully we can we can cover this in one hour. Okay, I'm gonna we go to go through some learning outcome. We're gonna discuss. I'm gonna present you some tips on how to design learning outcome and what kind of introduction that you will wanna put as you are at, at the beginning of your MOOC, and also the core content, which is the learning units, learning resources, learning activities, and assessments, and also of course as when your student has completed your course, you should have an outro lah. Uh, so how do you how are you gonna make the outro section in your MOOC? Okay. So these are we're gonna go through this uh, aspect today. All right, learning outcomes. Okay, so for learning outcomes, uh depending on what kind of MOOCs that you are creating, all right, uh there will be a different way of doing the learning outcomes. Okay, for for those who are creating MOOC for credit transfer. And also micro credential, uh, the learning outcome we want to we want to try to match as closely as possible to the one in the course outline in my class, uh, because in the in the end of the day, uh, the courses that you created the MOOC course, then the learners will take your course and then when when they completed your course, they will they will hopefully they will apply for credit transfer lah. For example, our own student taking your MOOC course, they will want to use the certificate, okay, and apply for credit transfer so that they don't have to take the course through face to face. Uh, so that's the general idea for MOOC for credit transfer and MOOC micro credentials. Okay, so the difference between MOOC micro credential and credit transfer is that. Uh, MOOC cred micro credential, we split that course or unpack lah, or unbundle it, they say, uh, into smaller courses. But students still need to complete all the smaller courses in order to apply for credit transfer, same as the MOOC for credit transfer. Right? So for MOOC for credit transfer, we just need to create one course. Okay? But whereas MOOC for micro credential, we will split the course into three smaller courses, uh, so that uh, into a bite size lah. Uh, so so in this, what kind of scenario where student will learners will use micro credential is that when they feel like they just want to have a, a tester of your course, uh, maybe they just take your part one course. Uh, if they like it, then they will continue with part two, and then if they really like it, maybe they can complete it. Complete the third part. Uh, let's say your course has three, yeah, three parts, right? Let's if your course has two parts, it's okay as well. Janji as long as as long as it is more than one one part lah. Uh, so that's the micro credential aspect. So it's quite straightforward actually. Uh, the concept, okay. And whereas for MOOC with industry, uh, this one is a bit special. Uh, so the learning outcomes is is to be decided between uh, you and your industry partner. Uh, you guys will will create an MOA, okay? And in the MOA, we we'll specify lah what is what does this MOOC uh will cover, will focus, and who are the targeted learners? Uh, maybe how much is the buyer run? Uh, what's the payment? The fees? Are you gonna charge fees? Uh, so that's the that's why we need an MOA lah. Uh, in order to be able to 
claim your MOOC as a MOOC with industry. Okay, it's a proof that we have a collaboration with the industry. Okay, so basically, the, so I think this year, uh, I think four of our teams, okay, MOOC developer this year, are creating MOOC micro credential. Uh, so meaning that uh, each team will have to plan to split the cost based on the cost outline in my class and split into at least two uh, two costs or three smaller courses okay however okay even though it's small courses you still have to do this thing uh, each course must must have this criteria i must have these sections uh, introduction section okay the main content okay and outro uh, let's say your micro credential each micro credential should have this kind of structure uh, just that the one with MOOC credit transfer will be much more la, longer la, because it combines, it covers everything in one course. Whereas MOOC micro credential, you will split into smaller courses. Okay, yeah? so I hope that one, that one is clear. All right. Okay, so how to design learning outcome? Okay, this one is standard, la, just a friend, it's just a reminder la, for us. Okay, uh, we follow, usually we follow the smarts. Um, smart framework okay of learn, creating a learning outcome okay specific okay provide details about particular aspect of the expectation from the course okay meaningful uh, it is written in language that is understandable to students and others okay if the sentence of the learning outcomes is too complex to understand then uh, learners might not be might not might not be confident to take the course if they don't understand what 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 is the learning outcome from the courses? All right, appropriate, okay, fit for and off purpose suits the learners and satisfy the required standards. Okay, maybe you're targeting uh, pre-university student. So the level of your learning outcome, uh, the level expectation should be uh, matching with the level of the learners that you're targeting for. Uh, could be for lifelong learning, maybe different. Maybe for pre-university student is different. For postgraduate student, the level is different. And also an uh, R stands for realistic. So we have to create a learning outcome that is uh, actually achievable uh, given the time constraint or uh, the suggested time constraint, lah, assuming the student will take sufficient time to complete the course. Okay, is it realistic for, for the student to complete? Uh, right? And based on available resources. Do you provide in your MOOC? Do you provide the resources needed, or do you expect students to find the resources? Uh, so it depends, lah. Depend on each, uh, what kind of MOOC you're creating. Okay, and also testable. Some measures of progress or achievements towards them get that can be made. Uh, testable means you can assess uh, their outcome. Okay, what they learn through your assessment. So it's not vague. Lah. So in open learning. All right, in open learning, there is a feature, the hashtag feature, okay? Uh, this is which, which you will label your each of your learning outcome, okay, with the hashtag. So your activity that you created and also the assessment that you created, uh, at the end part of the page, you will be asked to give a hashtag. Uh, this hashtag is the one that will uh, tag the assessment to which CLO is linked to. Something like, uh, something like in my class, right? My mark, kan? when you create the assessment, you will assign, this assessment is, will cover which, which CLO. Uh, so in open learning, it, it use this feature called hashtag. Something to remember lah, uh, when you start populating the content on your open learning page. Okay, for the intro section, okay, that's all on the learning outcome. Any, any questions on this so far? Is it clear? Okay, so so for those who are using, um, those who are creating micro credential, so try to follow as closely as possible with the CLO stated in the course outline, uh, so that is is easier for student when they want to apply for credit transfer. So, so when when we see oh the the CLO are the same, so it's easier for us to do the assessment, easier for student to. Uh, to be su successful lah to in applying for credit transfer. Uh. Dr. Tony, oh, yeah. questions, all right. 
yeah. uh, maybe both of you and Dr. Fiza could manage mm. to answer this question. Uh, uh, by the way, I'm Ben uh, from FTP. Mm. So we, mm. hi. <laughs> so mm. first of all, in re when we try to look into the roles, because what we try to do in FTP is we try to get both. One is macro credentials and credit transfer. So we know mm -hmm. that when we try to have both, that does mean that particular program will be benefited for someone outside the year water course, outside the program, and at the same time, it will be benefit uh, the students who are taking that particular similar courses, uh, which mm -hmm. they have options. Either they want to go for the uh, one that has been uh, offered every semester uh, through face-to-face -face or online learning platform, and the other one will be through MOOC itself, because so nowadays, we have to understand that some of the students that prefer to be like, why don't we do it casually? And then it's okay for us to just take this particular course and participate in the activity. By the end, we managed to get uh, what I call credit uh, credit transfer mm -hmm. and complete it uh, as according mm -hmm. to our, their own times. So that's why mm -hmm. uh, when we look into this particular approach of MOOC for credit transfer and MOOC for micro credential, would, mm -hmm. would there be any problems or any challenges that we as a developer we face when we try to have both at the same time. Uh, any comments on that? Actually, when you do micro credential, you are also creating for credit transfer. Yeah, that is uh, my understanding. So, uh, but that's why if, yeah. if, if, we, if there are any issues related to that, if there's none, definitely it will be much more easier in, the, in, in such a way. Lah. Because that's what we, you said, uh, you, that is what you mentioned earlier on, right? when mm. you try to have MOOC for credit transfer, uh, in compared to micro credential, we have to divide it into certain sections, so certain slots, mm -hmm. so that there will be part one, part two that the student might join. But, but there are also, also a MOOC with credit transfer where they don't have to divide it into certain uh, sections. So they, they mm -hmm. just took those particular course and what we have to completed all those particular units. That's it. Uh, that yeah. For us, we do understand that our uh, what I call learning unit is quite uh, what I call extensive. That's why we have to divide it so that we get the micro credential perspective. So mm -hmm. I, I think uh, I, I would like to get the response on that. Thank you, Dr. Terry. Uh, the decision to do credit the uh, MOOC for credit transfer and MOOC for credit micro credential is by the faculty. Okay. So in the end, uh, both 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 are uh, both are Credit transferable. Uh, but the thing is, for micro credential, you need to complete all three. Let's say you the, the MOOC course has three parts, right? Uh, so a student must complete all three parts in order to apply for credit transfer. If the student only apply manage to complete two out of three, uh, student will not be would not have enough uh kesetaraan lah in terms of the content, the CLO, in order to be able to apply for credit transfer. Uh, to Bezanya, the difference. Whereas this meaning this student will have three certificates. Okay. Whereas student with one certificate from here can directly apply for credit transfer if they want to. Uh, this one you because the course is divided into three, so a student need to collect three certificates of completion uh, in order to apply for credit transfer. All right. So uh, uh, for this particular two micro credentials and MOOC credit transfer. Uh, mm -hmm. Similar to the previous question that I asked Dr. Fiza earlier on, uh, mm -hmm. so the, the process will be handled by your side in order for it to get it done, or are there any other extra documents needed by the faculty in order for us to have it, uh, what I call, uh, credit transferable uh, in that sense? Oh, okay. The, the, you mean the, the students? process to apply for credit transfer, is it? No, I mean, so in order for us to make sure that it's uh, our, the courses that we offer to the student uh -huh. is uh, credit transferable. So uh, are there any procedures that we have to adhere? There's a MQA guideline that we're gonna inform, for micro credential, we will have a special form that will help help you fill out as well, as well uh, yeah. to inform MQA that, oh, we are offering micro credential course. Yes. For these particular courses, uh, just to let the uh, MQA know. Lah. All uh, right. So for our fac for the faculty, because this is these questions come from our dean, because her mm. concern is in regards of are there any paperwork that we need to prepare in order for us to make sure that it's credit transfer and micro credential. So as what um, uh, the answers given earlier by Dr. Fiza, it seems like everything we just prepare the documents that uh, required the SIMS or even the what I call not only SIMS uh, the 
course outline itself mm -hmm. uh, is sufficient enough and then had everything will be handled by uh, your side uh, in order for it to what I call to be to get all those credit transfer status as well as micro credential status is it correct yeah if if you, if the, the if the course is uh, from an accredited program um definitely eligible for credit transfer yeah uh, and we followed that closely to the course outline uh, okay. to the my class uh, should be no problem uh, okay, so thank you then. if yeah because uh bgka also, we are also in uh we'll also that's the document we'll send to bgka as well they were involved but yeah but that part will be will need to be done when the com the MOOC is almost complete <laughs> okay uh bukan, not not before the MOOC begins mm -hmm. uh before the development starts uh, as the development almost complete then we start prepare the paperwork lah. To, to inform mqa inform our bjka unit that uh, we have officially micro credential course uh, so don't worry about that <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that lah as as when you when the course is almost ready to be offered to the public all right sure thanks uh, for yeah. yes all right thank you for the question by right uh th that's why we we follow when we do these MOOCs right we will follow strictly to the ones in course outline uh, that's why we don't we don't we don't do macro credential uh the con any i mean out of the blue one lah. ah or, or what what's in the punya micro credential okay uh we we strictly follow the ones that accredited by the mqa based on the program based on the courses in the accredited program so we can go to the next section okay uh intro section okay uh for those who have taken tgd <laughs> uh so i think you, you might might find this familiar lah, all right uh, for those who have not or ta not taken tgd or already taken tgd long time ago so something new lah. all right okay so for the introduction section okay uh as every MOOC should have an inter introduction section okay the reason why we should have the introdu introduction section is uh obviously to become a welcoming message to provide uh, to give to welcome our learners to the course okay so we have to uh for give some kind of friendly tone inviting them to join thank you for joining the course all right and, and at the same time the introduction section is where we introduce the instructors the facilitator tutor or the course administrator if there is okay if they are depending on uh how you you design your course lah. because sometimes some of the MOOC course they have a lot of people involved right uh, so we have to introduce all the those instructors involved in creating in developing the MOOC so that the learners will know and recognize the instructors okay we don't want the learners to be uh, like surprised lah, tiba -tiba, and suddenly there's a different instructor out of nowhere out of sudden so then then you will create some uh confusion uh, that's why we also encourage to when we do the promo video uh, to involve all the developers uh, so that the learners can quickly learn about the instructors briefly lah. all right so another reason to do intro introduction section is also to provide an overview okay of the course okay this one is different from promo video promo video purpose the purpose is to attract them to the course to entice them or oh, take our course uh, whereas once they are, the learners are in uh, you might want to provide another video or uh, a different method to introduce or to give an overview of the course so have something like course hypnosis a bit a bit more detail lah than the promo video promo video usually we estimate around three minutes in length two or three minutes in length right whereas the overview can be longer uh, this one is inside the MOOC course not at the landing page of the of the course okay landing page means the promo page of the course is inside once learner go, enter your course then in the introduction section we should provide an overview of a course the course overview okay or the course synopsis besides that okay you also need to in the introduction section we need to inform learners okay about how they can get started with the course okay maybe perhaps 
other courses has a different way of they structuring the course. So uh, we need to get the students acquainted lah, with the how to how they navigate the course. Okay, how you how the developers arrange the layout of the course. So these are the ones that we need to give tutorial lah, to the learners. How best the the learners take the course, go through the course, and also how to come how they will be able to complete the course. In the introduction section as well, we should provide the suggestion lah, the estimated duration to complete the course. Uh, so maybe oh you can take this course once a week for for one hour. Ah, uh, so how much time they should invest? Uh, in this course every week uh, so that they can help them it can so that it can help them to you know uh, allocate some time uh, try to complete the activities in your course okay what are the assessment methods that will that you will give them in the course in the MOOC course uh, so we have to inform them earlier and also what do the learners get in return when they complete the course uh, so we're gonna say it, it is at the introduction section to we have to mention that lah. Uh, by the end of this course when you complete you'll receive a certificate of completion achievement uh, or maybe you want to give some gifts ka, apa ka, grab voucher pun boleh, in case lah mana tahu you know, to get them excited right uh, something bonus for them uh, so if you if your course has some prerequisite uh, maybe like for micro credential right uh, let's say uh, the learner suddenly register for uh your macro credential part two uh then the maybe inside this course in your mooc course in your part two mooc course you mentioned oh uh if you just have to remind them that uh, to take part one as well in order to so that they can uh, have a whole package lah, uh, just to remind them but we do not force them we give them we just tell them inform them that's actually part one and part three so you have to inform them if there is a prerequisite uh, besides that, maybe the prerequisite doesn't have to be taking the course, the earlier course, maybe something that prior knowledge they must have before taking the course. This one, you have to be mentioned, you have to men inform them as well lah, in the learners, if any. Let's say if your MOOC course is a bit technical, uh, you can inform them what kind of hardware or software uh, needed in order for them to, while in order for them to take the course. Okay, uh, maybe some of the assignment require the use of certain hardware or to use some certain 3D CAD, AutoCAD software. Uh, so just let them know so that they can they can prepare lah for it. Also, uh, also how the learners can communicate with the instructor when they take the course. Maybe the developers, the create, uh, the MOOC developers plan to have a once in two weeks session, live session with the learners. Uh, maybe boleh juga, something like that. Or, uh, you give some email contact info okay how to connect how to e how to con uh, contact the instructor if there is any if there is any question regarding the MOOC also set and explain expectations or ground rules so maybe there's a rules that the the instructor have uh, for learners to follow maybe there's a specific rules huh? we don't know which what kind maybe because certain topics may require certain uh, rules or maybe maybe the instructor too busy okay so maybe just to show, okay i can able i'm able to meet all the learners live uh, once a month uh, or maybe you can only contact me through mooc to this platform only uh, let's say you say oh you can contact me to other means uh, through discord uh, okay to telegram so this this way we we quickly introduce lah, uh, uh, what are the things that uh, needed in order for learners to to get ready lah for the course something like a quick orientation. So that's uh, that's where we put all the content about that in the introduction section, okay. And of course, uh, before we move to the main main core main, uh, main content, uh, do a icebreaker activity. Uh, so that allow learners can participate and also share and get to know other learners uh, from taking the course. Uh, because usually learners taking this course might not know who the other fellow learners are because they might be from different countries, uh, different time zone, different culture, 
so this icebreaker activity is a simple activity uh, just to you know uh, just to allow learners to introduce themselves where they are from okay what the things that they like uh, so there's so many ways to do this icebreaker activity and this activity is located in the uh, i mean we recommend that to do this icebreaker activity in the introduction section of your MOOC. Okay, so what's the benefits of doing this? Okay, it makes learner feels welcome to the course community. Okay, uh, so when, because MOOC is open to all, okay, so we will expect that a lot of people will be taking this course and hence it will create a community of learners for those or have, who have the same spe who have the similar interests to learn the topic, uh, the course that you're offering. It also to reinforce learners' attention and interest by using relevant examples, analogies, anecdotes, and stories. Uh, when do you use these examples, analogies, anecdotes, and stories? Is when you provide an overview of the course. Uh, maybe during as you are explaining the overview of the course, you might give some anecdotes uh, or situation or uh, simple ones, just to get the learners uh, understand. Uh, what is the course about? Uh, so situational uh, story. Also, in the introduction section, we will invite learners to share their thoughts and ideas. Uh, this is their first opportunity to share their thoughts and ideas, opinion. Uh, so we, without, with, uh, at low risk, lah, without any high risk or without any stress, because the question we'll ask for icebreaker is usually it's a very simple, uh, harmless question doesn't require a lot of critical thinking so it doesn't stress the students out okay the learners and also as more and more participation involved then there will be a sense of rapport and community so that's it that why is that's why it's uh, it's good to have a introduction section for your MOOC course okay before the before you're giving them all the 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 meats of the course uh, the main content uh, something like this you can do in your normal classes as well since we are doing online right uh, you can first or two weeks you can do the introduction activity with your students in your class okay same goes with MOOC okay. any questions on this before we move to the next part learning units See, hopefully it's straightforward and e easier to understand okay basically intro introduction section is about uh, giving a welcoming message introducing the instructors okay provide an overview of the course uh, and also inform learners what what the, what the expectations are from the course what they need to prepare for what they can expect and also participate in the icebreaker activity okay uh, let me show this one this one example lah, uh, from open learning okay so i'm i'm using uh, some sample from open learning uh, because we are using open learning, so I have to get some examples from open learning uh, courses, MOOC course. Okay, this is how they do their introduction section of the page, of the course, introduction section of the course. Okay, so they introduce why minimum viable product. So they give a very basic information or fundamental, uh, fundamental introduction of what the topic is about, uh, of the course is about minimal minimum viable product so why minimum viable product and who are the instructor okay how to get started okay then the icebreaker get to know each other via another q and a so the, the icebreaker activity can be about food ah so create and share your unordinary questions or what's your favorite food Okay, assuming that learners are from different country, maybe they can share what is their favorite food from their own country. Uh, and if possible, try to relate lah with the topic. Uh, for example, with the MVP, minimum viable product. Okay. Uh, these are the hashtag here that I mentioned just now, the learning outcome. Uh, so usually we'll assign because it's the introductory section only so there's no need to put hashtag here okay but once we reach into the main content of the course uh, then it's good to put some hashtag which tags the learning outcome of the course this is another example okay let me okay. 
Okay, this one is from which cause? Augmented and virtual reality. Uh, so that's a welcoming image. Okay, introduction section, and this one. Uh, this one of the icebreaker activity. Uh, pick which character that you want to represent yourself when when you take your course. Are you a person who loves to play? Are you love to working in the sector of economy? Are you in exploring? Do you like to explore the world? Do you like to protect the cultural heritage? Or I like to educate. Uh, so pick a character that you would like to be within your character's ability. Cultural heritage, determine the power of thinking something that you would like to change to improvise. Share it in the space below. Oh, this is the icebreaker activity. Lah. So learners will share will post what the answers here based on the question given in the icebreaker activity. Okay, uh, this is another example uh, by National Audit Academy of Malaysia. Uh, they also created a MOOC course on open learning called Performance Audit. So that's how they create the introduction section. So should you have any queries, comment or recommendation, please contact the administrator. Uh, so that's where we inform the learners how they can contact the developers, lah, the instructor of the MOOC. Uh, they also share navigation, okay, guides on how to navigate the course, duration of the course, okay, and the completion certificate, what students will expect once they complete the course, the ice breaking, Activity, uh, your name, your nickname, where you're from, your favorite local dish. <laughs> okay, so there's a lot of ways lah, to do some the icebreaker activity. Uh, this another one. Uh, home, uh, this one another example. Okay, about ecotourism. So the, this is uh, the video of the instructor welcoming the learners for joining the course. All this. So these are the texts. That explains what the course is about, and they also ask icebreaker activity. Share your favorite travel destination, uh, because the topic is on ecotourism. Uh, so naturally, the the icebreaker activity should will be about something related to travel, lah, kan? Uh, so something easy for learners to participate in. Okay, so this one example, okay, try to have be friendly, inviting, okay, uh, have fun. So those kind of positive tone lah, uh, when we welcome the students. Okay, say hello and where, where are, where in the world are you game? So this is an example of icebreaker activity. So when we design the MOOC course, you have to keep in mind that uh, there's a possibility that learners from around the world might be taking your course, okay. Uh, but they just take the course through online. They are, they might not be able to be here physically in Sarawak, in Unimas. Uh, so they might be very far away, maybe from Hawaii, uh, like for example, Alaska. Uh, so that's that's where they can share, uh, participate in the icebreaker activity. So this are some examples uh, that you can design your introduction section of your MOOC course. Don't worry, uh, for this workshop, we don't go, uh, we don't edit uh, open in it was open learning yet. I'm just sharing you how exam the examples first so that you have some ideas what to expect. Okay, when we have we give you the the access to open learning later, uh, then you can explore, try out different methods, uh, try to use the different tools available in open learning, right. So the next part is on the learning units. Okay, so this uh, in open learning, how, how open learning structure the typical course in open learning is that uh, they divide, they call it, uh, the, the, their learning unit is called modules. Okay, when you access open learning later, uh, you will see open learning, when learn, open learning states something related to modules, which means it's actually learning units or topics lah, uh, in our academic language. Okay, in, in their system, they call it modules. But for us, sometimes we call it learning units. We can also call it modules. We all, we can also call it topics. It's our chapters 
it's up to us actually how we want to label it but in the system open learning system they call it modules okay inside every modules that's uh you can create pages uh so these are the pages the pages are the space to populate multimedia content the learning resources learning activities and assessment okay and how to populate the pages is by using the widgets uh this widgets is like your ellipse tools uh, uh you know your ellipse label uh ellipse uh ellipse link url okay uh those are widgets uh, in open learning term uh, so we use the widgets to create the content on the pages and then we collect all the pages together into one modules in learning units okay uh, so so th that's why you need to have uh you need to create the sim lah. i mean you have to have some uh, your sim first before we enter the open learning uh, so that you know already know where to put where to where to place the content okay so these are the general structure lah, of the MOOC in open learning okay so different platform may have different ways lah. but for open learning this is the one that they they shared to us the the standard structure lah. Uh, the base lah, the base structure of the your MOOC course okay your MOOC course will contain several modules and each module will have uh supposed to have lah, supposed to have more than one pages okay and each page okay can have uh multiple widgets or just one page one widget pun boleh you can have more than one widget pun boleh okay the one is it's up to you uh how you create the instructions on that page okay so the sequence of learning units should be logical okay and ease the consumption of knowledge effectively all right uh, so try to view it from the learner's perspective okay uh, when we arrange the content we have to think about the learners how the learners will uh, follow the the flow of your course of your MOOC so the sequence can be different from the sequence listed in the course outline in my class uh, so we have that question last time uh, we have our developers last year we had developers such as can we rearrange the order of the topics compared so it's so a, bit, a bit different from the course outline it's okay yes boleh reorder if you think it's more suitable but make sure all the topics are covered lah. Uh, okay uh, jangan when you reorder it tiba -tiba some of the, top, the learning units disappear uh, then we then then we, when we student will want to apply for credit transfer tak dapat because some of the topics are missing uh, but if you want to rearrange it's okay okay to make it a flow better uh, but make sure all the topics are covered in the based on the course outline okay that's very that's the critical part lah. Uh, the so you have the liberty to rearrange the order of the topic okay so the learning the learning units covered can be more than once the ones listed in the course outline uh that's one more one more thing uh let's say oh i want to have more learning units actually boleh uh, janji jangan kurang uh, as long as it can be more than the ones in the course outline it's okay uh, let's say or oh, maybe maybe in the future you want to cqi the course right the course the, the one in course outline in the future so you already add some more learning units before in in your mock version so it's fine uh, so that when it's time for you to do your cqi crm your course uh, then you can easily update lah, because you already done the material uh, in mock so tak ada masalah okay jangan kurang lah. uh, more than the course outline is okay just don't uh, not fewer than the course outline okay so when you design the page okay uh the pages here okay as you populating uh your your mock page okay with all the widgets okay? uh, so have to think about the page look and the feel of the course page okay so as you are doing it okay use relevant and attractive images icons infographics colors okay numberings uh, numbering is the it's a good signposting lah as a it allows help guides learners the flow how they should follow the the content okay colors are useful as well okay and other visual elements uh, so try to use uh relevant and attractive in visuals lah. 
and then sequence the content of the page so that the flow is logical and easy to follow. And also don't, don't write too long winding sentences. It's better to write short and direct instructions so, so learners can easily follow. Okay, and less confusion lah, kan? Uh, and also avoid bombastic words to minimize confusion. Fancy words, okay? Unless it's maybe your course is on literature, uh, maybe it's okay to use uh, fancy words, okay? The literature punya uh, special words or unique words or rarely used words is fine for for a literature course punya mo. Uh, but for maybe for, for example, for ecotourism, uh, maybe it might not be appropriate lah to use some bombastic words or fancy words, okay, that most of us might not know the meaning, eh? unless we manually check <laughs> in Google, uh, what is this word mean? Also, try to proofread your writing to avoid grammatical and spelling errors, uh, okay? So, try to, to try to write on the Word document first before you copy paste to the open learning. Uh, that's our tips. Uh, use the Word, our Word document can add an editor function, right? Uh, so we use that one before we copy paste we check first okay if there's any possible potential grammatical spelling error if tak ada it's good you can copy paste it into your open learning jangan pergi open learning baru nak check the other way around. so it's a bit better to write it type your content first on your word document okay to use the editor function in your word document uh, if okay, then you copy paste the whole content to Open Learning. Okay, all right. So let me show you some example of the structure. Oh, uh, Terry. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Ah, boleh, boleh, boleh. Okay, okay. One question from Azahari. Okay. Uh, ask: Can we combine few learning units in course outline as one learning unit? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, you can if you think it's more appropriate that way, okay. But make sure when when uh, when 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 student apply for credit transfer, those those learning units, okay, uh, those units are are covered based on the course outline uh, well, It's up to you how you wanna reorganize or rearrange, uh, but make sure those learning units are covered based on the course outline. Adalah. Uh, maybe in the course outline is it appears in learning unit two, but in MOOC it appears in learning unit eight. Uh, it's okay. Or maybe it, learning unit two to appear in within learning unit seven kan dalam one of the subtopic of learning unit seven. Pun boleh. So feel free to post the question uh, in the chat. Okay. Right, let me show some example of the. Okay, I can show you this one. Cost structure. Uh, when in open learning, these are some examples uh, of how you can structure our course. Okay, uh, this one MOOC, okay, is in, in BM. This is it's created by open learning, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, no, no, it's by Sarawak, Sarawak. Pustaka, Pustaka, Sarawak. Uh, so, so they have a MOOC course in open learning. Okay, this is how they created their course the layout uh, general structure the first part is the introduction uh, module pengenalan uh, pengenal lama utama pengenalan khusus uh, kenali pakar and facilit facilitator anda uh, then they will start with the module one okay module one they also have a page for introduction to introduce the the module one okay and also maybe this one is the topic lah they start covering each topic so i assume that they split the videos into smaller bite size uh, so one one small video is for this page another video on this page okay at the same time uh even though they've just put one video here they can also add additional paragraph inside uh, or other other graphics or infographic on this page uh, all right dipusaka knowledge base sumber talian uh, sumber maklumat atas talian aplikasi persidangan video So every module ada page on pengenalan juga lah. Uh, but it's up to you how you want to present it. Okay. So 
So module are here ni, which is the outro lah. Uh, so they have a reflexy reflection activity as an outro. Okay, another example. Uh, this one is I think from UTM if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So this is how they design the the structure is how they structure their their MOOC. Okay, topic one. Okay, the introduction section. They they show at a different section, not in the main content. Uh, this one is the main content already. Okay, so they have a learning each they, they in this course they design a learn they also include a specific learning outcome for that particular topic. Students are expected to understand and explain the following software engineering and problem solving, algorithm concepts, data structure concept. So they show one page contains lecture notes and video. Another page contain video, another video, uh, another video. So they have like four videos for this topic, topic one. And then after the video, there's a quiz, assessment, lah, learn, uh, the assessment requirement. Next is the, then they have a forum. Uh, maybe forum is to discuss further about maybe the quiz ka, ataupun about the, the video given. Uh, so this this forum is considered as the learning activity, uh, whereas quiz one is considered as an assessment. Okay, so same goes lah. This the that's how they the this course developer, uh, structure, uh, the MOOC. Okay, topic two abstract data type and C plus plus class. Okay, uh, so kalau boleh try to make it consistent lah. Uh, so they always make it here. Lecture notes and video will be the first page. Yeah. Uh, so the rest will be video. Maybe others are other problem solving activity. Problem solving. Problem solving is considered as the learning activity. Lah. And, the, and then other quiz. Okay. Next topic. Uh, they also include anime. Huh? You see, new topic, the next topic. The first thing they show is the lecture notes and the video. Then the following can be any other types of uh, media. Can be animation on recursive, another learning activity, on problem solving activity, then other quiz, and also uh, forum. Uh, so learners pun tengok, already they can start, they can have a sense of what to expect in the course. Uh, Right. Uh, so next topic or oh, another lecture notes and video. Ah, uh, then this time other tutorial pula activity. Now maybe tutorial ni, they, they start using the software lah. Uh, then other. No, Doctor Terry. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Ah, okay, okay, okay. Boleh, boleh. Yeah. Yes? Uh, from your uh, from your previous slide, uh, is it mandatory to have the quiz and the exam on schedule time? Or is it uh, they will have uh, the exam or the quiz in mm -hmm. their own time? Because our learner, our MOOC learners, they will take complete the course uh, like as a self paced uh, self directed. Uh, so they dis they decide when they want to take the quiz, when they want to participate. Okay, so it's we we, we don't we we are not we are not actually teaching much face to face class punya style. Uh, so we prepare the quiz, but learners can take whenever they feel like they are ready. Lah. Hopefully they answer the question. <laughs> yes, thank you, Dr. Terry. Okay, All right. Okay, so the quiz, uh, we can set a, what do you call it? A conditional, okay? A condition that student need to do uh, tutorial, then the quiz will be open. Uh, boleh juga. We want to set it like that. The, there's a the conditions lah. Only when students have completed tutorials, then student can take the quiz for. Pun boleh. Uh. Right? Uh, another question in the okay. chat, Dr. Terry. Uh, what are minimum numbers of learning outcome from each learning unit? Oh, uh, okay. There's uh for 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 learning outcome for each learning unit there's there's no there we have we don't have any uh required standard for that. Uh, yang penting is the the main overall CLO. 
Okay. Uh, so this one you have the the flexibility lah. How you want to design, how you want to write your the learning outcome for each learning units. Okay. So. Okay. And also remember, ah, uh, they they also as the thumbnail they use interesting thumbnails lah. Uh, to as the label for the page can so different like for, for example problem solving insertion slot they use a picture of no problem uh, well forum they use a picture of a lecture hall student in a lecture hall so something interesting for, for student to look at and click uh. all right quiz five uh, so they put a, uh, a gambar with a, a picture with a number five on it just to just to help uh guide the learners lah. all right maybe like for example like these tea bags here insertion sort uh, maybe it has a metaphor lah. it can be, can be something like a metaphor bubble sort uh, maybe they use a they use picture of a bubble cloud bubble talking bubble kan so it's up to you how you want to present it lah. okay uh, but we have, have a lot of example ah this is the lecturer instructor i uh, can see her use re recording a lecture i mean like show her explaining using on whiteboard let me jump quick further down to show some that's another example of a standard format uh, for example this one another pustaka project MOOC project they created a standard graphic can i this thing here this yellow orange graphic at the bottom uh, the lower third lah, they call it just to make it cons uh, form just to make it consistent and standardized lah for branding purposes uh, you can design it that way okay let me jump down business event so they uh, they use this image so that it looks consistent and belong to each other lah, uh, related uh, for learning I, I let me show you another another example ah uh, this one this one this one is from a MOOC from Australia okay uh, they use the numbering lah <laughs> as the as a thumbnail image for the page intellectual property and copyright okay and then number two justification copyright step three what are human rights step four so it's something like a signpost lah uh, to guide the learners something like this is okay as well you want to design your your thumbnail image of your page uh, this one is by our own medical uh, lecturers punya MOOC uh, they created a design thumbnail uh, consistent uh, so this thumbnail sh say, uh, shows that it's a learning unit introduction video it's a page for learning lecture notes okay it's a lab learning activity skill lab reflection is an activity as well and then self-assessment so this one overview uh, for this MOOC okay they they created a standard interesting style okay the first part is an overview to explain what is this unit about and then the objective by the end of this unit you should be able to uh, then this lah what the okay but this one this one it was this one this version is the MOOC they created before the KPT nak kita buat MOOC for credit transfer micro credentials matu so the although the concept is similar lah uh, ada learning activity ada assessment okay so it's a good example okay another one this one is by open learning themselves okay uh, so it's how they use graphics to show uh, the what the page is about okay getting around open learning where we headed portfolio on open learning so they also include the text okay the title of this year they also uh, place it in the image uh, so make it even clearer even more attractive So the image we can create 
Uh, you can use Canva, okay? You can use Canva, you can use Adobe Spark, Photoshop, or we can use the free image website, uh, the, the one like Pexel, macam-macam lah. Well, like, we can use, okay? Make sure the image we, we, that we use to create this uh, is uh, it's not copyright lah, or maybe they allow us to use it, uh, okay? So that to avoid issue lah, copyright issue. So the main content is on learning resources. Okay. Uh, so in open learning later, okay, yeah, is, is it something similar like Ellip? Okay, just that the uh just that how they displayed uh is a different lah, differently. Uh there's a widget, okay. To create the content, we need to use the widget. Okay, there are widgets that if you want to put some instructions, okay, you want to copy paste articles. Okay, a report, a journal article, or so essay. You want to write essay, you can use the text widget uh, and put on the page. If you want to include video, like recorded lecture, instructional videos, recorded tutorials, demonstration, uh, short documentaries, animation, or recorded forum, okay, uh, you, you can use the video widget. Uh, that's where we insert the link on the video to the into the widget to the so that will appear on the page. If you don't use this, you cannot put the content in. You need to, when you put the content, you need to use these widgets. Okay, audio, uh, let's say uh, Stanley said just now, he want to input podcasts, kan? Uh, boleh? Recorded interviews, recorded lectures, audio lectures lah. Uh, use the audio widget. Uh, let's say you want to share uh, e-books, e-poster or infographics that you created or presentation slide, use the file widget and then the white space here white space white space here is actually used for uh, for you to uh, manage the layout uh, because when you when you put many widgets on one page you will become very crowded so the white space widget here is to add some create some empty space uh, so this is easy to look at on your page so that your content will look a bit more pleasant lah more breathable when people they look it tak, tak, tak padat sangat. Uh, so that's where that's why we have this white space widget. Okay? You will encounter these widgets as when you when you are when you access open learning lah later in the future, in the near future. So almost like ellipse juga lah. Huh? Uh, just maybe the labeling, the, the design is different. So the design consideration for the resource, learning resources, okay, all of this, what, what do we need to watch out for, okay, uh, we need to consider the potential diversity of global learners, okay, there can be a lot of learners from different countries, okay, so we have to watch out for that, remind when we, when we decide what kind of material we want, we want to put as our learning resources, also consider to support inclusivity, Try to have some subtitles if you can, if you have time. Okay, think about the those who those learners who might be dyslexic, and learners whose English is not the primary language. Ah, uh, the potential uh, Most of the learners usually the English is not their primary language. Okay, none we use non-discriminative, non-offensive, uh, non-alienating language. Uh, use representative examples or case study. Okay. Uh, uh, if if the topic can be applied to from around the world, maybe we can use some example from different parts of the world in our one of learning resources in our recorded lecture or in our presentation. Uh, so that learners from different parts of the world, oh okay, oh my when they watch it, they oh, realize that ah the the instructor also covers some parts from their country. Uh, so it creates it creates some interest lah in them. Give, make them more excited juga. Next is vigilant. Uh, make, be careful in handling copyrighted material. Okay, use proper academic referencing style, formats, and attribution. And then well, if you want to use, op you can also use open educational resources, which stands for OER. Okay, if you can find one and you think it's suitable, uh, you can use it in your MOOC. Open educational resources. Okay, for copyrighted material, uh, make sure to Properly use the material uh, so that it tak melanggar copyright lah. Uh, let's say uh, like one like for one course, uh, we are talking about uh, we are ex we are teaching about arts kan, uh, cultural contemporary arts. Uh, so we I think we can use 
we can use the image of the arts when we explain about the arts in our presentation and uh, but but make sure we provide some uh, attribution uh, who are the who are the author of the artwork when it was created okay uh, and also make it consistent lah. if we use APA then we use APA the whole the whole MOOC lah, in the whole content that we created dengan one part one video we use Harvard style next part we use uh, MLA style uh, so make sure it's consistent lah. okay so that it looks more professional Okay, so this part is on content design lah, consideration. Okay, next part is so learning activities. Okay, uh, so learn, in learning activities, there are so many widgets in open learning we can use. But, but open learning categorized them in a certain way lah. Okay, the widgets, basically learning activities is the one that we want our students to participate scan for them to interact. And one of the core ones is the posting activity where student post file, maybe they want to share their artwork, okay, their design, uh, in, they can use post image, okay, post file, maybe PDF, they want to share the presentation, they share the video, uh, you, they can use this, you can use the post file widget, post text, uh, you, you, if you just need them to post, write up a, a short paragraph or an essay, uh, you can use the post text widget instead. So usually when we use the posting widget, all the all the posts by the learners, it will be automatically collected into a gallery where all the learners can view uh, everyone's contribution. So that's where learning happens as well. Uh, so other learners can see what other other learners are uh, doing, submitting their work. So sama sama belajar lah. So it's something like a pedagogy lah. We call it like in our hips and. Okay, paragogy or pedagogy. Uh, I think it's pedagogy. Okay, another group of widgets that we can use to en to encourage learning activities participation is a checklist. Okay, random selector. This one is something like a gamification a bit lah. Uh, when we use this random selector widget, student when when student click use this random selector, it will give a random activity to the student on the particular activity that you created lah. Maybe you have four options four types of questions when I ask the student but so student just click this random selector then open learning will give a random question I one out of four for student to answer so that's the random aspect lah okay checklist checklist is the one that to give to give uh learners uh to check lah double check whether they did all the activities what are the activities missing the okay or self assessment uh, for self-assessment, they can use checklist. You can give them to do checklist to give a random type of assignment. Uh, you can use the random selector widget. And then let's say you want to create something because maybe you're already advanced, right? Uh, you yeah, you, you want to embed some H5P ka, or Genially or maybe you want to uh, embed other content. Uh, you can use HTML snippets. In open learning, you use this widget to order for embedding. Okay, HTML5 and HTML snippets. Okay, let's say when you use, you want to create a learning activity outside open learning, you can embed that activity inside open learning by using this widget. So it's got integration lah. The the ones that open learning have right now, but it's still under under beta they said is the poll poll and chat room uh, this poll is much like what a, a global survey lah. Uh, so all the learners taking your course they can participate in a poll uh, so the poll slowly will update lah, uh, based on the some participation of all your learners so that's one interesting part lah. Uh, so people from around the world can do a poll participate in the poll and then chat room, uh, let's say you want to have a certain time when to meet with your learners, global, your global learners. Uh, so you can assign, you can set a time where you can have a meet and greet uh, uh, with them, with the learners. Pun boleh, kalau nak lah. So it's much synchronous sikit lah. Uh, but actually, MOOC ni more towards asynchronous kan. Uh, but let's say for some reason you want to have a 
you want to spend time with your learners in the MOOC, uh, you can create a chat room session. Okay, by using the chat room widget. Okay, but remember that this is in the beta stage. Something to consider lah as you updating your SIM right now. Uh, what kind of activities that I can do? Uh, I can ask my student to post file, post image, post text. Uh, I can ask them to do some certain activities. I can give them random assign tasks uh, based on a collection of tasks. Huh? Random means, uh, even though it's random, it's still relevant to the topic. Lah, kan? Uh, maybe you have four four types of questions you want to ask. So you just need them to participate in one of them. So you can use the random selector, let upper learning, give them, a, assign them a random task to do. Okay, so activity design consideration. Focus on learners to achieve the designated learning outcomes. Make sure it relates to the, to the learning units. When you do, when you create the activity, think about, ask yourself, does it motivate and inspire learners to complete the task or not? Uh, we should encourage learners to connect with other learners by sharing, discussing, and collaborating. Uh, so this is the call, uh, the widget call that allows people to share, the, to post and view other people's posting. Uh, so this that's the reason why we have this call, uh, uh, posting widget, to allow student learners to share the creation uh, to discuss. Okay, they can share their opinion. Pun boleh. Facilitate learners to connect what they are learning to their situation. Does the activity that you design allow learners to connect with what they are learning to their situation? Maybe they are tengah mencari kerja sekarang. So the activity uh, preparing a CV uh, is related, kan? As they are looking for a job, uh, so it's important to them lah. Uh, Okay, berkaitan to what their needs are. Prompts learner to reflect on their learnings and concept within the course. Uh, allow learners to reflect on what they have learned and the concept what that they gain from the course. Those are the activities that we can design. Okay, offers of opportunity for learners to apply the concept they are learning in meaningful ways. Uh, maybe the activities that you give them uh, make sure that you can, they can apply the concept that they learn and it's also meaningful. Uh, tidak, the activity is not like uh, one off saja, then forget about it. You know, something is, think about, think to design, consider designing activity that uh, is meaningful. Lah. Enable learners to apply and share what they're learning in a way that interests them. Uh, those are the type, those are the good design consideration lah for activity. Okay, encourage them to connect with others. Okay, let them share how the learners can apply what they learn in their situation. Uh, allow, uh, encourage learners to reflect on their learning. Okay. Find ways to do activities that's meaningful for them, applicable, practical, relevant in the situation right now. Okay, allow, enable them to able to express what they learn okay in the way that they like uh, that's why that's why there's a feature here they can post file post file means any type of file video pun boleh. They, let's say they want to express in the in the artwork pun boleh. post image uh, artwork uh, infographic boleh, in the form of post file or image a lot of ways lah they, they, they can actually participate all right and of course, uh, in order for make sure that it's easy for us to recognize the activity, to spot the identified activities, always uh, label uh, clearly the specific task is a learning activity and not assessment. Sometimes we confuse juga lah because nowadays we have alternative assessment can. So some assign assessment may look like an activity, but it's actually assessment. So make sure we label clearly lah that it is an activity or a quiz or a, a assessment. Okay, oh, and also remember to use tagging, uh, the tagging feature. Okay, let me show quickly show some activity. Okay, reflection activity, uh, module reflection space. You can ask them to reflect what they have learned.
So the activity must have some yeah, image, some text. Ask them to watch a video. Okay, after they watch all these things, and then that's, it's time for activity. Activity label it, make sure it's clear. It's an activity, but this is easy for students to recognize, identify. Oh, this the developer doesn't use the hashtag. Huh? So the reason why we encourage to use the hashtag so that it's easy learners to compile the activities that they did, they have done, and also easy for them to compile the activities, the assessment that they have done, and then apply for credit transfer. Because to apply for credit transfer, the learners also not just they need the certificate of completion, they also need to provide evidence of their learning which is through the learning activities and the assessment that you created for them. So they have to participate. Lah. Uh, okay, that's why we need to have, we need to properly design the activities, the assessment nicely and easy for, for the learners to compile later when they need to apply for credit transfer. Okay, assessment. Okay, there are two more things, two more parts. Okay. Assessment. Okay, uh, when it comes to assessment, ensure that assessments are related to the learning outcome. Of course, uh, label clearly that the specific task is an assessment and not a learning activity. Okay, so assessment can be a quiz type or a non-quiz type. Okay, non-quiz type is more like a alternative assessment. Lah. So also rem remember to attach the hashtag to the assessment page so that student learners will link oh okay so i'm doing this assessment and it's related to the certain learning certain learning outcome uh, so these are the widgets lah, that you can use to create assessment in open learning okay you have them uh, you can if you you will identify these uh, icons lah, which mean which is the which, the type of questions. Each question has its own uh, icon, okay? Multiple choice, okay? You can do multiple choice in your assessment. You can ask for short answers or fill in the blanks, uh, match it activity, uh, categorize, uh, crossword. Crossword can be used as an activity and also as an assessment, okay? Yang penting you have to remember to label which one is activity, which one is assessment. Okay, the, and then this submit button is when learners already answer the question and they need to press the submit button for the, for the open learning platform to check the answer. Uh, so if if they tap press the submit button, uh, it will, the open learning will not check the answers lah that, that the student, the learners key in. Uh, only when, So that's why we need to include this submit button icon widget as you created the quiz at the, at the end last usually it appear at the end of the page okay so for your assessment if you want to do a quiz type of questions you, you have the options to do multiple choice short answer fill in the blanks uh, match it okay categorize and crossword okay okay for for non-quiz type uh, for non-quiz type, like something like alternative assessment, like you ask student to post a video, submit a video format, submit a graphic, uh, or write a very long essay. So, for example, for project, report, presentation, or performance. Uh, uh, so, it's a type of non-quiz. You can still use the same widget last earlier in the learning resources, uh, in the learning activity, like post file, post image, and post text. But then, we have to make sure that we don't allow them to share. Ah, so when we submit, when the learners submit, other learners cannot see what the learners is sub. Other students cannot see what the learners is submitting. Only the the instructor and the learner can view them. 
then this widget can be used for assessment. When learners start sharing, it becomes a learning activities, right? So we have to remember to uh, disable the sharing feature in this widget so that students don't accidentally share their assignment with others. So when we do non quiz type of uh, assignment, okay, uh, we have to, it's good to provide grading rubrics as reference to allow learners to do a self assessment before submitting the assignment. Dapat tengok kah? I takut this one is cover. Let me zoom in a bit. And also remember to disable the sharing option lah. Okay, all right. Last part, last part. <laughs> all right, the outro section. Okay, outro section. Okay, basically, outro section is where you complete the, uh, where you summarize everything lah. Okay, you're going to wrap up, summarize. Okay, and congratulate learners for completing the MOOC. Uh, you, you, maybe you create a video to congratulate them that they have completed the MOOC. Maybe you can also ask to, them to do a reflection. And also, uh, usually we will create a cost survey, lah, cost evaluation survey, cost feedback for us to improve the cost for the future. And also, you can also use the outro section to invite learners to uh, join your other MOOCs. Let's say you're doing micro credential, you have part one, part two, part three. Uh, you invite them to join part two and part three. Uh, maybe you can invite them to come to Unimas, or maybe you can join a community group that you created in Facebook, ka, in Telegram, ka, or in your own website. And also the farewell, lah. Uh, the farewell. Thank, say goodbye to them. Thank you for taking the course and bid them farewell. Uh, so with that, I also bid farewell. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's my presentation for today. Thank you. Sorry, I'm a little bit masa skip. Okay, that's right, my thank you so much, Dr. Terry. Okay. All right. All right. Um, any other questions? Do, you, do we have any questions? All right. Thank you so much. And we'll see you the next session. Thank you so okay, much. Thank you. Bye. Assalamualaikum. Bye.